Acts 2 verse from verse 14, please. Let's just read what happened here. This was after the Holy Spirit came the first time at Pentecost. When the day of Pentecost came, they were all together in one place. No, no, 14, my, pardon me, 14, 14. Right. Um, this was after the Holy Spirit came, right? Then Peter stood up with the eleven, raised his voice and addressed the crowd, just like I'm about to do. I'm about to address the crowd, right? Fellow Jews, let me say fellow brothers and sisters, and all of you who are in this building, let me explain to you, listen carefully to what I say, these people are not drunk. That's the first thing. Okay, so point number one. No, we're not drunk. As you suppose. It's only almost 12 in the morning. <laughs> now this is what was spoken by the prophet Joel in the last days. Say the last days. Last days. Are these the last days? Yes. You think so? Yeah. yeah. In the last days, God says, I will pour out my spirit on all people. Your sons and your daughters will prophesy. prophesy. Did you hear some people prophesy this morning? Yeah. Mm, you did. Your young men will see visions. Did you see some people just go like blank out? Yes. Right. Your old men will dream dreams. Who of you are dreaming dreams? Interesting dreams. Even on my servants, both men and women, I will pour out my spirit in those days. Which days? These days. Because this is from the prophet Joel. And they will prophesy. I will show wonders in the heavens above and signs on the earth below. Blood and fire and blows of smoke. All right, let's stop it there. Right. So I just want to explain again that what we're seeing here might be new to some people, but it's actually old. Because in the time of Acts, guys, this was church. Not quite, we're not there yet. We're getting back to it. In the time of Acts, guys, things were much different than what, we, what we've come to know church to be. We think it is someone standing in front and everybody being very respectful and quiet that side. And then us having a program that's always more or less the same. That is not what the Acts church was like. When the Holy Spirit came, people were flying, you know. People were prophesying, people yeah, were singing, people were bringing words. Some people were crying, some people were laughing. Yes. Why? Yeah. Because Holy Spirit will come and interact with each yeah. per person differently. Mm -hmm. Whatever your need is in that moment, Holy Spirit will come to you. <laughs> Why? Because it's not just the pastor or the duomini or the reverend or the bishop or the priest or whatever who is called to minister to the Lord, who is called yeah. to be close to the Lord. Yeah. And now all the other people have to come through a person again. Mm -hmm. No. Every one of us is called to have that personal, intimate relationship with the Lord. Yes. Each one of us is called to have that connection with Holy Spirit. Each one of us is called and is allowed to, is invited and can accept to have that closeness with the Lord. Amen. So what you see in our church is maybe new, but it's old, but let's say it's new, right? Because the Lord says He's always doing something new. I make all things new, He says in Revelations, right? So when something is new, it means like it won't look like something you've seen before. Am I right? No. Because yeah. if you've seen it before, then it's old, right? Yes. I mean, if you've seen an episode of Friends, like a gazillion times, and then it's on again, <coughs> that episode is old, right? Mm -hmm. Will you ever see a new episode of Friends? Mm -hmm. No, because it's old. Mm -hmm. yeah. Right? So things that you've seen before, things that you've experienced before, it's old. Yes. The Lord is coming to bring new, mm -hmm. to bring new. Right, so now here's the challenge. Are you going to look at something that's new and strange and different and say, No, thank you. They must be drunk or they must be crazy or something. I am out of here. Are you going to look at it and just cast it aside and just throw it away because what you're looking at is too new for you? Then you say, ah, I've never seen something like that before. Ah, it's too strange. And then you run. But if the Lord says, I'm doing a new thing, how can you then discard the new thing when the new thing comes? Yes. You know, you can't look at something and say, ah, that's too strange for me. Because maybe that is the new that the Lord is also calling you into. Yes. Yes. But now what happened is in our heads, we have formed these things of what we think the Lord is like. What we think church is like, what we think Sunday mornings must be like, what time we think it must end, yes. what time we think it must start, yes. who we think must say something. Now when Yoni is bringing a word, there's a 
some people are confused. Why isn't it that one of the pastors saying something? You know, because only the pastors are supposed to speak in church. No way, Jose. Yes. New. Do you know that in the Acts church, they got together and different people would bring different words? Did you know in the Acts church, they would have little groups, almost like cell groups, but all together, right? In one group, one group will be praying for people. In the other group, you know, they were singing. In the other group, maybe there'll be some prophesying. In the other group, there'll be a word of knowledge about a problem in someone's life. And someone will say, hey, that's me. That's, okay, let's lay hands and pray, and pray for you right now. Yes. Because that was the kind of church. Yes. yes. Because can you imagine when the church is like that, change comes. Yes. You guys sang, you started at Ireland, and change is going to come. Came from you. Who said that the worship leader has to start a song in church? That's right. That's right. Who are confused when the song came from the people and not from us in front? That's good. Who felt a little bit uncomfortable? Yeah, it happens, right? But maybe that's new. Yes. Maybe the Lord is going to start bringing songs out. It's not the first time. It's happened for a couple of weeks now. That songs just start coming out of you guys, you know? And you just feel that song. And the song is coming, you know? And maybe it's going to happen like that sometimes. Always in the order of the Lord. So it will never be quiet chaotic, right. you know, are people just doing crazy things, but when the Spirit is moving, Hallelujah. guys, when Amen. the Spirit is moving, a new thing comes. Yes. A new thing comes. Yes. So I'm begging you, when you come in the morning, don't think that you will know what will happen here, because you will be greatly surprised. Yes. You might even be greatly shocked. Yes. And you know, the worst one is you might be greatly offended. Woo! If you think you're coming to church and you think you know what it's going to be. Wow. Mm. Wow. And you know what? What now if the Holy Spirit was telling me that Madeleine must carry on this message? Wow. And I give the money to her and she just carries on because I'm sure she has something to say. Why? Because Holy Spirit is working in our hearts. Yes. And we have different gifts inside of us. Yes. And you're going to see, I'm telling you church, you're going to see how the Lord will start stirring those different gifts inside Ooh. of us. You know, and someone will come to Pastor R and whisper a word that they have on their hearts for the congregation. Pastor R will check it and say, yes, go for it. And someone else will come and give. And someone will come and say, well, I have a, I have a song in my heart. Wow. You know, and it will start going like that. We must get back to that time of the Acts Church. That's right. But more than oh, that. Oh, yes. Because the Acts Church, the, 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 the model that they showed us by now is old already. Yes. Because we've seen it. Yes. Oh. So if the Lord says, I'm doing a new thing, then it's going to be even greater. Amen. It has to be even more. Mm. You know, so the Lord is doing something. So don't you dare think you're coming to church just to be, to be a spectator. Yeah. Don't you dare you think you come here just to sit here and look at us. Hallelujah. We are not putting up a show for you. Hallelujah. We are not just singing here yes. and bringing yes. a concert. Yes. And now you have to decide, oh, the band was off today, so I'm giving less money Woo. today. Yeah. I didn't like that song. Jesus. Why is Pastor, Pastor Al's voice sound so weird? Why is me on keyboard? I go on bass. <laughs> Don't let such things distract you because you know it's not about you. It's not about me. Why are we here? Why am I here? Am I here to make you sing? No. Am I here even to talk to you? No. Why am I here? Praise God. For the Lord. For the Lord. If I was alone here today, I would do the same things I did today. Whether you were there looking at me or not. Because I'm here for the Lord. Amen. I'm here for the Lord. So my question is, are you here for the Lord? Yes. Do you come here because you just want to come and look? Do you want to be entertained? Wow. This is not the place. Yes. This place. A special place because the word says where two or three are gathered in the Lord's name, yes. there the Lord comes. Yes. Jesus steps into the place when we gather like this and the Lord is here for each one of us to experience, for each one of us to have that intimate time, right? So it's not a time for you to just look and be bored and wait for the light, nice song that you like or something, you know. It's about the Lord. Right. So it shouldn't matter what's happening here. Wow. You should be with the Lord. Yes. Amen. Amen. You shouldn't be distracted by what's going on and how Pastor R is falling and how our knees are going and how that one fell and, you know, it looked all weird and maybe that one, the snotties were going and what. That shouldn't distract you much. Because why are you here? You're here for the Lord. Yes. And you come with that mentality. I'm telling you, you know, the Lord's going to accelerate things inside of you. The Lord's going to stir things inside of you. Because it says deep cries out to deep, right? The deep of the Lord cries out for deep inside of our souls. And the Lord stirs it. Stirs it so that you can grow and grow and grow and display more fruit for the Lord, but also so that you can start stepping into a place where you become a minister to the Lord. Hallelujah. Because each one of us are called 
to be active in this body. That's right. Maybe you don't know what that is yet. Maybe you don't know what that means. Yeah. Doesn't matter. What is your job? Focus on the Lord. Oh, yeah. Yeah. What should you do? Lock eyes with the Lord. Yeah. What should you do? Just be in the glory and allow yourself to get lost and say, Oh, Jesus, you're love. Oh, yes. You know? Yeah. So we sing about the Lord's love. So jump in. Yes. Jump in. Be there. Worship the Lord. That's Get right. in deep with the Lord. That should be your focus here. Yeah. doesn't matter what that means. If the Lord, if the love of the Lord in that moment means that you must come forward and be prayed for, then it's that. Yes. If it means for that, that you sit there and you're just with the Lord, then it's that. Yes. Whatever it should be in that day, you should just be connecting Amen. with the Lord. Hallelujah. And that is why we're here. Amen. Amen. So when you see all the crazy, you say, Lord, I want to be even crazier for you. Mm -hmm. Amen. I want to be out of my mind for you. Yes. And Paul says that in the word, by the way. Yes. I'm out of my mind for the Lord. When I'm in my mind, it's for you guys. Mm. When I'm out of my mind, it's all for Jesus. Amen. Amen. So if I'm all undignified, you know, that's me and the Lord. That's right. Yeah. So don't come here to judge someone else okay. on what they're doing with the Lord. It looks strange. Oh, no, that's yeah. weird. Uh, judge yourself. Wow. Yeah. Judge yourself. Where are you with the Lord? Wow. What are you doing with the Lord in that moment, you know? Are you looking around being distracted? Or are you really pushing in? You're saying, oh, Lord, I feel this Holy Spirit drew. Woo! I feel the jam of Jesus coming on. And I'm just going to glorify you, Lord, with yes. all that I have inside Amen. of me. And that's what it's about. Yes. So in this word for preparation for Sosa time as well, get your heads ready by yeah. shattering that old thinking. Hallelujah. Because I'm telling you, now we've experienced something today. When we get to Durban, it's going to be new. Yes. <coughs> Different. Yes. Come on. And then you can't look at it and say, oh no, why, why did I come all this way for this? Wow. Uh -huh. Get your heads ready. Yes. Get your heads ready. Yeah. Every day, every time we gather for every day, you know, how do you prepare yourselves in the morning before you come here? Obviously, you kind of have a bath somehow. Put on some fresh clothes, maybe. Put on some deodorant, maybe. Brush your teeth, maybe. Do you do all those things? Sometimes? Hopefully, maybe. Sometimes, you don't tell me. Right. You do the physical preparation, right, to get here. What is your spiritual wow. preparation? Oh, oh, sure. What is your spiritual preparation that you take for before you get here? It's not my job to carry you to the throne. Wow. It's not my job to play nice music so that your emotions can be stirred and now you get closer Woo. to the Lord. It's your job to prepare your heart to say, Lord, today I'm coming here to just have fellowship with you. Sure. Prepare your heart, get ready in your heart. When you step in here, you're like, oh yeah, wow. oh yeah, yeah. I'm be spirit in this place. So that it doesn't take us 20, 30 minutes, an hour to get close with the Lord. Right. You're wasting time, precious time. Mm -hmm. So get yourself ready, prepare yourself in the morning, you know. It's like, oh yes, it's going to be the best time with the Lord. Hallelujah. Mm. Don't come here looking for squeezes. Amen. Don't come here for all kinds of other things. Come for the Lord. Amen. Because then you come expected, right? Hallelujah. When you're expected, it means you're hungry. Yeah. And the word says that the hungry shall be full. Yeah. Shall be fed. you're bored, wow. maybe you get fainted, yeah. maybe you don't know what's going on, wow. but you have to stir that hunger inside of you. Yeah. Yeah. Even it's just saying, Lord, just more of you. Yes, That's an easy break. Yes. More of you, less of me. Yes. More of you and less of me, Lord. Today, Lord, just strip me of stuff. Lord, so that more of you can be inside of me, so that I can glorify you more and do more for you in your kingdom. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Amen. 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 Jesus talks about an old wine skin and a new wine skin. And for a long time, you know, it's a difficult thing to, to understand. But in the old times, right, they didn't put wine in bottles. They put the wine into wine skins, like made out of skins, right? You know, and they put the wine inside. But you had to put new wine into new wine skins because it's still going to ferment a bit. So it's still going to push out a bit. So that new wine skin must be able to, to handle the pressure, right? So if you put, try to put the new inside the old one that's already stretched, you know what will happen? Yeah. Yeah. And the wine will be everywhere. Yeah. And the skin will be killed, right? Matthew 9, 17. I'm just going to show you this. So what we've realized is that every day, every moment, every time, you know, the Lord makes, some, makes it new. So it means that it's a new wine. There's something new that the Lord wants to do in your life. There's something new that the Lord wants to give you. There's something new, somewhere new where the Lord wants to take you to. 
but you are not going to experience that if you allow your hair to be an old white skin. That's right, amen. If you're stuck in old ways of thinking, right? So Jesus said, ne neither do men pour new wine into old wine skins. If they do, the skins will burst, the wine will run out, and the wine skins will be ruined. No, they pour new wine into new wine skins, and both are preserved. Both because the wine skin, you, as the holder of the glory of the Lord, and the new wine, the glory that the Lord is pouring out in that moment, the glory that the Lord is pouring out in that day, you know, both are preserved. Because otherwise, the Lord will come and do something new in your life or try. You know, but then your head is the old wine skin because in your head you say, mm, I, I know, I know there was that word over me today, but I don't really believe in that stuff. <laughs> wine skin burst, new wine gone, <laughs> just like that. Amen. Amen. So what must you do? Would be your head. Yeah. To become a new wine skin. Mm -hmm. Say, Lord, I might not understand. I don't know what the new is going to be because the new is new. New means new. Yeah. Amen. So I'm going to tell you what the new is so you can prepare. You must just say, Lord, whatever. You are the king of the universe. You are my maker. You know what I need. I trust you. Whatever it is, how weird it might sound, Lord, I trust you. So let the new come. I want to be the new one skin. Lord, pour it out. And then when it's poured out, then you can take it and then you can contain it. Because the other thing that happens sometimes at conference is that people aren't ready. They haven't, they haven't prepared their heads for what the Lord wants to do in that moment, right? So they get there and then things might be a little bit too strange for them or they don't understand it, right? So the new wine is poured out at conference. Then they come back and they try to start to rationalize. They start to use logic about this thing, trying to figure out what happens. And then whatever they receive there, whatever they received in that time, what happened? Gone. Gone. <laughs> Gone. And then it cannot do what the word was supposed to do inside of them. Don't miss out. I'm not just talking about conference. Now I'm talking to everybody here for whatever the Lord is doing. Prepare yourself. Make sure that you're not stuck in old ways. If the old things in your life that you need to get rid of, get rid of them. Because old things in your life, old patterns, old hurts, old people that shouldn't be there anymore, all kinds of old things will keep the old in your head. So ask the Lord, what is new for you now? What does it mean? What does He want you to let go of? What does He want you to surrender in this time? Because we're getting closer to spiritual new year, right? Yeah. Spiritual New Year is in October. It means it's the calendar of the Lord, basically, that the Jewish people still follow, right? So we're going to celebrate. We usually do a nice celebration of spiritual New Year. And you feel it because the Lord is stirring something in us. Why? Because it's, it's the end of the year, technically. Do you see that? In spiritual, we're moving towards the end of the year. And the Lord is saying the New Year is coming. You know? What are you going to drag in with you? Or what will you be willing to let go of and surrender to the Lord once and for all? Not the thing that you leave and take back and leave and take back and leave and take back. But the Lord is saying, are you going to be prepared to lay it down and say, Lord, no more. That old thing, old thing must go in Jesus' name. Because I want to make place for the new of the Lord. I want to be new. You know, the Lord says in 2 Corinthians 5, I think, that, that, that we are new creations. The old is gone and the new has come. The Lord says that about us, but we are the ones dragging the old still. When the Lord is saying that the new is there already. I hope you're hearing me today. Don't allow the old to be a monster in your life any longer.